Hi, I'm Derek, and this is DC to Daylight. If you've been following along, you know that we've been working with JFETs as an amplifier. In this video, I was kind of looking for an application where we could use the JFET as a buffer and also as an analog switch, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna incorporate that into a distortion pedal. <laughs> You may have also seen that Clem made a valve or tube uh, distortion guitar pedal in a previous episode. Link to that is up there. This is gonna be a fully uh, solid state version that is building upon what we've already learned about JFETs and operational amplifiers. So we're gonna use JFETs as a source follower or a buffer on the input and the output stage of this guitar pedal. And we'll use an op amp to control the gain, which will be connected to a clipping stage, and we can control the amount of distortion. So let's get started with our distortion pedal. Without a distortion pedal and a guitar plugged directly into an amplifier on its clean setting, it sounds kind of like this. Nice and clean and jangly. If we want to get that heavy metal or rock sound, then we need to hold on. Let me switch this over. It sounds a little more like this. So what a distortion pedal does is before the signal gets to the amplifier, okay, we're taking the signal from the guitar and we're clipping it, okay, using some diodes and we're chopping off the top and bottom half of the waveform and it makes it sound crunchy like that. Now because we're going to be goofing around with that signal a little bit, I went ahead and took my Element 14 Presents um, breadboard and I made it into a kind of guitar pedal building platform. So I pulled out the, the posts here and I'm gonna put some potentiometers on the back so I can control the volume and distortion level with these, these guys. And I also bent some uh, metal and put some quarter inch jacks so that I can easily plug the guitar and amp into this thing. And we can goof around with it. And there's also a micro switch so we can switch the distortion in and out of circuit. A quick word about uh, the voltages that are gonna be involved because we kinda need to know that. Um, so we're gonna talk about guitar pickups for a second. Uh, essentially these are, well, this particular style is called a humbucker and on the rear there's a ceramic magnet and then we have these uh, ferrous poles right here and that generates a magnetic field around this uh, guitar string. When we pluck that guitar string, it disturbs that magnetic field, okay, and it generates a voltage. So it's a little voltage generator, right? Looking at it on the scope, gentle plucking, looks like it's about 500 millivolts peak to peak. Single shot mode tells us almost two volts peak to peak, okay? So those are the range of voltages that we're gonna get out of these particular guitar pickups. Electrically, it's constructed by using a really thin gauge wire like number 43, AWG or 44, okay? So there are thousands of turns on this thing, which sum up to Henry's of inductance. And as far as resistance go, we're talking about thousands of uh, ohms. So as far as sensors go, it has a pretty high impedance. If we put a load on the electronics of this guitar, it's gonna change the tonality of it. It's going to make it sound muddy, okay? So we wanna present a high impedance to the guitar itself. All right, so now that we've got that out of the way, let's head over to the schematic. So here's the entire schematic of what we're gonna to build today. It's a little busy right now, don't be scared. This portion down here, you don't have to build. I wanted to experiment with analog switching with uh, JFETs, and this allows you to switch the distortion circuit in and out so that you can get your clean signal or the distorted signal by using a momentary push button, which I personally like. I know there's a camp of people that are hardcore. It should be true bypass with an actual uh, toggle switch. Um, I'm not gonna go that route with this today and we'll focus on each individual stage and explain what it's doing and then we'll build each individual stage one at a time and we'll see how it sounds. So the way this works, we plug our guitar into this guy and then we have this AC uh, coupling capacitor. So it blocks DC from you know, entering the guitar. Um, but uh, it doesn't have to be a large value because we have such a high impedance with this JFET. Now JFETs are reversed PN junctions and the input impedance is basically this resistor right here. So we're presenting approximately one mega ohm of input impedance. So the guitar will be happy with that. I know that this 2N548 um, has a, an IDSS of around five milliamps to five and a half milliamps. So I've set my uh, quiescent current at about one half of that with this 1.5K resistor. So any voltage that I uh, input here, I will see at the output here in phase, okay? It'll be slightly less than this, but uh, essentially it's a gain of one. So the output of that JFET buffer goes through this uh, AC coupling capacitor, all right? Again, we're blocking DC uh, between stages, but we're passing AC. So that goes over to our non-inverting input and the resistance of our leg down here and the uh, feedback resistor set our gain, okay? So 
And this is a lot of where the magic happens with the distortion pedal, okay? The tonal characteristics and what frequencies you're actually distorting and amplifying come from this leg, okay? So we have an RC circuit here that determines where the frequency rolls off that's getting fed back into the op amp, okay? I'm not going to go into the op amp theory because we kind of covered that in a previous video, uh, but just know that uh, playing around with these uh, values makes a huge difference in the uh, tone. And you can also put uh, additional resistor capacitors in parallel if you want to change the gain of certain uh, frequency bandwidths, okay? You can do some really cool stuff. Now, a lot of folks will say, why are you using an LM741? That's a super old op amp and it's terrible. And that's exactly why I'm using it because it has a very bad slew rate. It actually distorts uh, the signal as far as the amplitude and, and how fast the signal needs to rise, okay? So we're not only just clipping, uh, in the circuit over here, but we're actually using the limited slew rate of the 741 to help kind of shape the tonal characteristics of the signal. And of course, all of this is really subjective. It's, it's really what sounds good to you. I personally like the 80s heavy metal sound, but that's just me. So this resistor RV1 here sets the amount of distortion. It basically increases the gain of the amplifier, all right? So what does that do? So the signals coming out of the operational amplifier, if they're below 0.7 volts, which is the uh, knee voltage of these diodes, it'll pass through undistorted. If it's higher than that, you'll get distortion. And if we increase the, the feedback here, the amplitude of that signal increases more and more and more, and you'll get more of a hard clipping, okay? It'll look more like a square wave. So when we clip a signal, we're actually turning it into kind of a square wave, right? And we're generating a lot of higher order harmonics. And those might not be pleasing to our ears. So the next stage that we're gonna go through is a low pass filter, and that's gonna determine you know, how much of that high frequency stuff we let through, how much of that harshness, and how much we wanna cut out, all right? And just leave the guitar tones or maybe some of the lower tones and cut off a lot of the higher stuff. So a low pass filter in the frequency domain will kind of look like this. We'll have, uh, we'll pass frequencies here in the pass band and then we'll kind of roll off at some cutoff frequency, okay? So we'll let the low frequencies through and we'll cut off the high stuff over here. So if we have the wiper turned all the way down here, this resistor is totally shorter than we're just left with 1.8K and this 4.7 nanofarad capacitor. We're gonna have a uh, cutoff frequency of 332 hertz, so it'll start rolling off way over here, okay? So we're gonna cut out a lot of that raspy stuff and it's gonna sound muddy. Now, if I twist that potentiometer all the way here, I have 100K plus that 1.8K in series, and my cutoff frequency becomes 18.8 kilohertz, so it's way out here. So I'm getting almost the full range of audio, which is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, right? I'm just below the 20 kilohertz at 18.8. So I'm gonna get a lot of raspiness, but I kind of wanted that so that I could play with the full range of, uh, you know, what sounds good, what doesn't. All right, now after we come out of that low pass filter, we go through another coupling capacitor to an output buffer. Now this may not be entirely necessary, but I wanted to put it there to isolate impedances from stage to stage. And I didn't want this volume control to interfere with the tonal characteristics of our low pass filter, okay? Notice that we have dry signal that comes out of our input buffer, and we have a wet signal that comes out of the uh, end of the output buffer. So that's just audio terminology that's used dry and wet signal. Dry meaning your original signal, and wet meaning it's whatever effects you have added into it. So our JFET switching circuit uh, takes the input from the dry, and the input from the wet. And if we keep one JFET turned on and the other one turned off, we can at the output, okay, just let that signal pass through or we can let the other signal pass through. So how do we force one to be on and the other to be off? We use a transistor flip-flop. I'm not gonna go into flip-flops. They're a little complicated and that's definitely a subject for another video. I just wanna point out that if we make the gate of the JFET, you know, zero volts will allow uh, the wet signal to pass through. And if we make the other JFET uh, more negative to where it's uh, at VGS off, we completely block the signal from passing through. So we can either switch between wet or our dry signal and at the output, you know, feed this into the output of our jack. So if we apply a momentary pulse, okay, with this switch, we'll turn one transistor on, one JFET will turn on, the other one will be off. And if we send another pulse, it flip flops, okay? So when our distortion is on, we have an LED here that lights up and should indicate that we're, we have distortion mode on. And if we hit it again, uh, distortion should turn off and we should flip on the other JFET. So that's basically how it works. One is on, one is off. Well, off camera, I went and added all the flip-flop circuitry to the board. 
and unfortunately after all this work it's it's not really working it's not switching back and forth between sections there's a high-pitched squeal and uh, I don't have enough time to mess around with this so we're just gonna focus on the distortion part of the circuit and I'm gonna rip all this out but that gives us a good excuse to come back and revisit flip-flops and you know maybe see why this didn't work anyway so uh, let's test out the distortion part of the circuit Here's the finished prototype pedal. I've taken out the flip-flop stuff and we'll be recording with a 50 watt Boss Katana into a Rode NT1 microphone. All right, let's take it for a spin and see what we got here. So, clean setting. So we've got distortion on. I'm just gonna roll the volume up a tiny bit. So there's a little bit of crunch there. Let's give it a little bit more gain. Let's go into full metal mode. All right, well, this was a pretty basic distortion pedal, really the bare bones of what you need to do to make a distortion pedal. So hopefully this inspires you to come up with your own design. I know that uh, a lot of you folks are probably out there making your own guitar effects. It's kind of a fun thing to do and there's a huge community behind it. And uh, you can find designs, mix and merge things together. And of course you can always contact me to help you with your design. I would love to hear if you have used this video to make your own. You can interact with me down in the comments or in the community at element14.com. I look forward to hearing from you. All right. Have a good one.